So yesterday, one of my favorite customers sends me a message. Says I'm having some tractor trouble. Yesterday was Sunday. He said I was out pulling somebody out of the ditch. And on my way back, my MFWD started making a whining noise and it gave a big bang. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. He said I limped it back to the shop. Didn't make very much noise at two miles an hour. And he says, uh, you got time to come and look at that tomorrow? <laughs> I don't got time to look at that. No, I don't have time. So I did the right thing and I said, yep, I'll be there at 8.30. Well, it is more like 9.45 right now. And I'm still not there. I had to blow my yard out, my lane out. My wife's got some uh, folks coming down this afternoon. I didn't want them to get stuck in the yard. And boy, the wind was howling last night. All day yesterday, we blew in pretty bad. So I had some yard cleanup to do. Anyway, now let's go check this tractor. I think he said it was a 7120. So we'll, we'll see what's up. Based on the information that he gave me, it, kind of seems like that's a good sized drift right there uh, kind of seems like we might have blown a planetary in the front there he says it's definitely coming from the front it's not transmission so one thing I have learned over time though is you don't get too excited about stuff because you don't know nothing until you actually get there and figure out what's going on and actually diagnose it so you can make all the guesses you want sometimes you're right sometimes you're wrong but you don't know nothing until you diagnose it. So, let's go for a ride. Oh, you trying out the four wheel drive this morning. Let's see if I can get through this here, wow. Backing out of it's nice and easy, seeing as we're backing downhill. We should make the rest of it now. Sometimes you got to make your own roads around here. There. Well, here's the next one. Somebody put tracks in this one for me. Uh, there was tracks through the other one too, but they were too far off to the side. I didn't want to risk that. This truck is just way too heavy if I actually get stuck. I don't know if you can see the coyotes out there in the field. One, two, three of them. And I'll see if I can zoom this in here. Yeah, see those guys? Okay, now this road. I'm not sure if I can get down here or not. Oh, this looks like somebody's been here opening this up already. Yeah, they cut this out for me this morning. Nice. Thank you for that. Saves me driving around. It's winter time in Manitoba, guys. This is the way it is here. Alrighty, so here we are at the shop. So we have a 7210R. Okay, pretty nice tractor. So I'm assuming we got something wrong with a planetary in here. So let's just take a real quick peek. Okay, so there's no leaks in here. That's a good sign. 
The knuckle is still good. On this side, same thing, knuckle is still good. There's no leaks here either. The wheel seal isn't leaking. The input seal isn't leaking. The output seal on the axle isn't leaking. Those are all really good signs. You can see this is actually grease, the axle pivot here. So these guys are good on maintenance. Sneak in here. All right. Drive shaft is all there. There's a lot of play in there. It's not a drive shaft issue. All right, so this happened uh, apparently while the MFWD was off. So what we're gonna do to start is I'm gonna fire the tractor up, drop the loader down, that'll lift the front wheels off the ground. And then with the MFWD off and the tractor running, I should be able to turn those wheels. I'm just gonna have a little look and see uh, if they jam up or if I can tell anything at that point. It would be nice to check the oil and see if there's a bunch of metal in them. But when the drain plug's on the bottom, that is not the right place to pull that plug. See, here in Canada in the wintertime, those hubs, when you take them outside, they turn into a vacuum and they'll pull a little bit of air through the seals. And then when you, because, because uh, the uh, hub cools off and gets cold, and then when you bring it inside overnight, these hubs warm up and the air inside there expands and now it becomes like a pressure cooker. And if you try and take that plug out with it at the bottom, it will empty that hub onto your lap in about an eighth of a second. So you don't pull those plugs when they're on the bottom. Let's go see what the other side looks like here. Yeah, it's still, it's still too high. I always rotate those to the top, especially in the winter time. I rotate them to the top, pull the plug, loosen it, release the air pressure, and then I rotate the tire over so that I can drain the hubs or whatever I gotta do there. So I can't check them like this anyway, so I'm going to see what, how the rotation works here. Okay, so these ones have the computer inside. It takes a little while for them to boot up. The fan in here is just going like a rocket. I don't need no cab fan right now. Come on, screen, boot up. Well, whatever, I'm just gonna start it. Yeah, hydraulics are locked, unlocked. Yeah, I dropped the loader down. We'll lift the front end up. Oh, we're out of stroke already, so now I'm gonna have to tip, tilt that bucket, but I gotta make sure that that bucket is not full of water or something. Yeah, we're okay. So I'll tilt the bucket down, and that will help lift the tractor up. Wow, we don't have enough hydraulic power for that, eh? Oh, man. Come on, John Deere, you're supposed to have awesome hydraulics. All right, I'm gonna have to put a block under the front, I guess. It's not enough to get those wheels off the ground. I'm sure there's some blocking around here somewhere. There we go. Okay, well, if you look at my table, you can probably tell I'm into this now. You remember when I was on the way here and I said, you can guess all you want, but you don't know nothing until you actually do your diagnosing? This is a pretty good example. Normally when a guy's driving MFWD down the road and something goes clunk and bang and that's it, it usually winds up being one of these planetaries. Not always, but usually. So I got here, I checked for leaks. There's no leaks in the front. Often if you have a wheel bearing fail or something like that, or, a, or anything inside there fails, you usually wind up with a leak either on the output shaft or an input shaft seals or from the wheel seal. And this one is all nice and dry. Next thing I did was got it up on the blocks eventually, lifted the loader up and I spun the wheels and they spin nice and free and easy. There's no funny sounds. It works really good. Now that's not a good sign. So then I, Rotated these over, I pulled the plugs, drained a little bit of oil out, and the oil 
in those hubs is really clean. So nothing has failed in those hubs. Then I went to the axle and I drained oil out of there. There's no metal in that oil. It's clean. So it's not that. So I checked the drive shaft and the knuckles are good. So then you're moving your way all the way back to the drop box back here. And uh, that's the next suspect. So I drained a little bit of oil out of the drop box. The drop box is that big housing there, and that is where the MFWD clutch is. That's where the clutch drum is that turns your MFWD on and off, is inside there. So I pulled that plug and drained a little bit of oil out, just a tiny bit. And that was a clean pan. But as you can see, we got a bad case of the sparkles in there. And that is bad. That means whatever has failed, according to our diagnosing, it's not a planetary, it's not a differential in the axle, it's not an axle shaft, it's not the drive shaft, it's something in that MFWD drop box. So currently, I have drained the rest of the oil out, and when I pulled the plug out all the way and dropped the oil into that pail, there was a bunch of chunks went clunking down into the bottom there, so something has catastrophically failed inside. So I need to get the drive shaft off and get a bunch of this other stuff out of the way here and pull that front cover out and see what's going on inside that drop box. Doesn't seem like it's gonna be cheap at this point. But pulling this apart is just basic stuff. I just got some clamps to get out of the way, one line to take off and this drive shaft to take off, which is all basic. So I will spare you the agony of time-lapsing that and I'll get you back in here once I uh, get this thing apart here. There it is, all right, drive shaft is off. So here's a little better look at what we're up against here. So these lines are gonna be a little bit in the way. I have to kind of force them up to get the top of that cover pass. So you have to take these clamps off there and over there, and there's another one up here. And then this line here has to come off. And I should be able to undo those bolts and kind of maneuver that cover out of there. But well, that's kind of what we're looking at. All right, that cover's off of there. You know what that means. Let's go have a look. Get our first peek here at what's going on. The light is gonna be a little sucky, I apologize for that. Okay. So, can we tell anything here? No. Oh yeah, that gear. Oh boy. That gear is just shredded. Oh, I think that means this transmission may need to come out. Wow, that's pretty catastrophic. Ooh. Oh, well guys, it is all bad news. It's all bad news. So that gear up in there that's all shredded, that's got to get changed. And to change that, that top shaft has to come out. To get that top shaft out, this transmission has to come off. And to remove the transmission, the tractor has to get split. It actually splits right here. And then all the way around, there's a bunch of bolts to take out. And then there is a ton of stuff that has to come off. We would need to take the loader off. We would need to take the blower off. I would need to build some different splitting stands because they want you to take the rear wheels off and the weights because uh, as soon as you shut this tractor off, it's in park, so you can't roll the rear end. And typically they want you to roll the rear end away and leave the front end sitting stable. There's ways I could get around that. That, that is, doesn't concern me much. The cab has to come off and these cabs are pretty heavy. So if you look at it this way, we got to pull the cab, we got we to gotta drop the blower, drop the loader, those are no big deal. We got to pull the wheels, pull the cab, and then split this thing, pull the transmission off, rebuild whatever's got to be rebuilt in that transmission, and then reassemble all that stuff. All those lines, all those hoses, all the wiring, all the sensors. Put the wheels back on, put the cab back on. We're probably talking like 50, maybe 60 hours of work to do that. Now currently, as I'm working on this one, I thought it was gonna be a planetary or something that not too big of a deal, but currently at the shop, I've got an 855 Cummins completely apart and out of a Steiger tractor waiting on the engine block to come back. So I've got another 30, 40 hours of work there. 
And I've got a 4020 that's split getting a clutch right now in the shop. And I have a Komatsu bulldozer that I'm waiting on some engine parts for to get that one back together. That's at a customer's place. And I have a scissor lift that's waiting for me to do some work. And I have a little three cylinder Kubota sitting on the floor that needs to get rebuilt. And I have a Kubota, I forget what number of tractor that is. I think it's an M series uh, coming at the end of this week to likely get an engine overhaul. And I have another four wheel drive Steiger that um, has a Caterpillar engine in it. Nope, sorry, wrong tractor. That one was clutch work. No, it's a newer Steiger. It's a red Steiger that has a Cummins in there and that engine needs to be rebuilt. And that one I was supposed to do in January and it's January 20 something right now. So that's not gonna get done. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I do not have time to do a job that big. I, I mean, I, I, I just don't. I just don't. I feel bad. I feel like I'm letting these guys down. But it's just that my whole winter filled up before fall this year. And I just can't do a job this big. I just can't do it. It's a lot of work to do. Pull that cab and everything all off of there. I just don't have the time. So I talked it over with my customer and uh, they understand. So what we're going to do is put this back together, pour the oil back in the transmission and it's going to go somewhere else. Don't know where yet, but uh, somebody else is going to have to do this one because I, there's just no way. There's just no way I've got the time. Can't do it. Hmm. All right. I guess that's it for this one, guys. I got the cover back on, my tools are all cleaned up, so that's all I'm going to have to take off and get back to the shop and get some more work done there. Oh, I feel bad, but I mean, that's the problem. You, you give your word to seven or eight other guys and then something like this happens and I guess you just can't do them all. I've been in business for myself for I think seven years now and I think this is the first time I have ever gone out and diagnosed a job that I could not complete. That bugs me. But I guess it's a good sign too. It's good to be busy. I don't know. I don't know if it's good or bad. I gotta think about this. So I left the drive shaft off and uh, these drive shaft shields because they gotta come off again anyway. And there's a lot of the shrapnel that I pulled out of that drop box there. So. Uh, this tractor will go to a shop somewhere, probably the dealer, and they've got a big job ahead of them now. Man, that bugs me. I'm starting to feel like I'm too busy. Oh well. But the main question here is why did that happen? Now, that top chair bearing shafts do not seem like they had any issues with them. It seemed like that was all tight. The bottom bearings and the on the the bearings for the hub. They seem like they're fine too. So I don't know if uh, it just had a bad tooth that broke off and then it chewed itself up from there or, I mean, if you rode those tractors in high speed with the MFWD on, that is really hard on them too. But this tractor only has 2,100 hours on it. It's pretty young. And this is not a real common failure for the MFWD, at least not on the green tractors. They don't usually bust those gears out, so not sure what's going on there I know they did have a transmission sensor repaired very recently uh, the dealer had come out and changed that but they weren't sure what sensor it was but the tractor was stuck wouldn't drive so I don't know if that's related not too sure but at any rate folks that's all we got for today for that service call I'm heading back to the shop here to get working on the rest of the stuff I got going on I appreciate you watching and I will see you on the next one.